Hello, good evening and welcome to the Photography Salon. My name is Richard Kalman and tonight we're going to be talking with Giacomo Brunelli about his life and career to date and about his rather unique signature style and also his successes within the publishing world with the very recent release of his book New York which has just been released from Skinner Books and um, we will talk about that in more detail a bit later on. But firstly, Giacomo, welcome. Thanks very much for being tonight's guest. Welcome to you. Well, thanks, Richard. Thank Good. you. I was just going to start, actually. It almost feels like I can't remember a time before it now, but how have you been managing with lockdown? How are you managing with homeschooling your kids? I can see you've got a couple of pictures from them on the wall. And are you managing to sort of stay creative at all? During this, well, yeah, it's been great to be able to spend uh, so much time with them. So, you know, it's been a like a blessing if you want, if you want yeah. to look at the bright side of it. Um, I was in, um, I was, uh, I was in the middle of something. So, uh, I was working on a my a new series of mine. So, in Italy, so <laughs> I had to stop it. So, uh, but apart from apart from that, yeah, it's been great. Yeah, it's been great. Yeah. Good, I had good. time to, you know, full, fully focused on uh, on the family thing. Yeah. And have you been bearing the brunt of the homeschooling or have you uh, been passing that to your wife or sharing well, it? I do. I do one hour in the morning. I do maths with uh, Federico. He's uh, okay. year far forward now. Uh, while Beatrice, year seven, secondary school now, she's more independent. So she wants to do things by herself but um but yeah so i do like nine to ten with yeah. him so we do maths so usually he's got like four topics four or five topics from 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 the school that's so, great okay. i find it difficult already to help them with their maths and you know i know i know you know year four still uh still uh I, still a challenge but, yeah, yeah uh, i started like, ask year. your mother <laughs> <laughs> But yes, 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 it's good. I did the, as um, in Italy, you can choose between like a, uh, when, um, when you are, uh, let's see, after secondary school uh, at 15, well, you know, between like sixth form, uh, you can choose between the scientific studies and the classical ones. Okay. So, uh, classical ones, you can do like Greek and Latin, while the, uh, uh, like the scientific ones, you, you do like Latin and maths, right? So I look for the Latin and maths, so you know it's an idea. I have, uh, yeah. So uh, at least then you can help with one because exactly most of our kids aren't studying Latin. And you got three, so you know, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a different thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, listen. I'm going to start with the questions. Um, I also want to say if anybody wants to email in any questions to us um, for me to pose to Giacomo, then please do, and we can hopefully get round to them. Um, but I'm going to sort of start with uh, a question that I know that for all the photographs that you take, you work with a camera that your father gave you. And I wanted to kind of find out if he was a very significant kind of influence on you becoming a photographer or your interest in photography? Uh, well, he was like an amateur photographer, like uh, amateur photographer, like, uh, I guess, like he would uh, probably do some uh, darkroom printing as well back in, uh, I mean, he was uh, like 20 when uh, me and my twin brother uh, were born. So, you know, it's, uh, he had to, but yeah, he was uh, quite interested in photography back uh, back then uh, but we sort of um uh, but he um i had just found you know his camera which was a miranda like a middle low middle uh, range uh, if you want like uh, it's it was like a like a basic one if you want yeah. like from, uh, from japan uh, 1970s 60s 70s uh, beautifully made uh, super uh, very very uh, uh, I was uh, 
I think over the, um, I got, you know, over, also I've tried different cameras. I'm, I'm from a Canon color, Canon snappy for like uh, travels to, to a Leica M3 that I still got, but uh, I find, always find the, the Mirandas cause I got, you know, many now. Yeah. Because uh, they break, so uh, they break down. So, it, um, um, so uh, it's good to have like parts to replace when they break. So, um, I've always found the uh, Mirandas and uh, affordable cameras, if you want, very suitable to my to my to, to the style of. Uh, so you know you jump on a train you put it like that you don't care yeah. you put it in the bag so you know it's very it's very easy for me to to fully focus on uh, on on the photography yeah rather than looking for you know rather than you know uh, not lots of equipment that you need to take around and you know exactly. and I only use a, only use a one lens so yeah <laughs> yeah so it's I don't have uh, much weight to to carry yeah i was gonna but, ask you but, but yeah but, uh, my father has been a uh, not influenced but you know my family supported me uh supported me over the years so you know it's yeah. been a great uh, it's been a great um, uh big supporters of mine so yeah, yeah uh, in that respect yes so always encouraged me in uh, in you know uh following yeah, my passions yeah so I was going to ask on that actually. So you, because you went to university and you studied communication, and then you did later on a sort of six month course in photojournalism. Was that a sort of change of direction? Was that a very kind of important period for you to study to then be able to go on and have the confidence to to go and and start a career in photography? Uh, yes, it, uh, after the uh, after university, I, uh, I did uh, five years of economics. Then I moved to uh, for the last year to the communication, to the communi international communication. So I right. did on uh, on that sort of studies. Uh, but uh, the um, after the after the degree, I decided to uh, I don't know, but I was this. Uh, I would um, um, I wanted to be able to use that camera that. You know, it was in front of me all the time, and it was so fascinating as object. So, yeah. uh, so the um, the the magic of photography is, uh, I mean, it, it is magic. So, uh, is magic. You know, the the meat, the, the, the machines uh, are magic, if you want. The diaphragm is magic. So it's uh, it deals a lot with. Uh, with this uh, part that we sort of uh, we can be surprised if you want. So it's in that in that respect, it's a medium that I really like. And is that did did you get sort of uh, sort of technical help and and sort of skills and knowledge from that course? Or has oh, yes, a lot. Oh yeah, it was great. It was a course in uh, Rome. Uh, I was uh, I was uh, uh, my wife is from Rome, so uh, we were sort of living there between say my hometown Perugia, which is Umbria, yeah. and Rome, which is like a less than one and a half hour drive. So uh, it was very convenient for, for us. So it was good, it was good to, uh, it was good to, so it, um, it was like a once a week for six months, where they uh, further journalism, the, uh, the, the course. So they would show us books, uh, how to build projects, uh, how to work in, um, with magazines, magnum agencies, that sort of, uh, cause probably at the time it, that was a, you know, photography to me was, that's all I knew about photography. So I, yeah. not having a photography background at all. So for me it was, uh, like the, yeah, photography was like, you know, like war photography, if you want, like uh, traveling, uh, yeah. That, uh, so it was then uh, probably the, uh, over the years, uh, I've, uh, my um, views, uh, you know, they changed along the way, if you want. And, and I mean, did, did the sort of photojournalism, traditional kind of, you know, war reporter or, or, you know, covering whatever the current affairs might be, did that ever sort of 
enter your head that that would be something that you wanted to do or was it just a, 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 a sort of a, a helpful way to start but you always had your own ideas about I mean it was a question I, about how, how you develop your your style of, of work. I, 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 I think uh, I think that was my uh, probably was my work that over time a sort of uh, uh, took the uh, so I didn't I never said okay I want to do that I probably it was like a natural progression of okay. my work so I was producing the work the, the projects that I that I liked and uh, over the years I, I just found uh, that you know I probably attracted people interested in uh, what I was doing so I okay. didn't I didn't sort of um, said okay I want to work with that I I would like probably to uh, I don't know to work for a don't know don't know but um, I never yeah, it's always been uh, something that I've uh, I've uh, attracted yeah or my work has at least uh, um, so um, yeah um, he never said uh, I would like to but yeah. Um, the these uh, components of photography that you have to travel, you explore. Yeah, uh, uh, you have to be like a anthropology if you want, and uh, you know all the all the science involving are very fascinating to me. I find um, find it very uh, I find it very uh, interesting. Interesting yeah. to uh, that with a machine you can do so much. Uh, the uh, probably never been interested in uh, like war. I've uh, always been like a. I never liked war, so I've always been very uh, like a more you know peace and love type of person. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah. Um, and when did you decide to to move to London? Was that was that a decision made for your your? Oh yeah, the we just had the, we just had the first baby, uh, first uh, um, uh, child. Yeah, yeah. Three, she's now uh, twelve, and uh, so she was six months when we moved to uh, ten months. Sorry, when we moved to London, so we decided we wanted to like be in the UK for for a while because we had a. I just had a, I just published a book in uh, with Dowie Lewis uh, back in 2008. And uh, we wanted to, I wanted to um, sort of follow the progression of the book. So we, I had uh, uh, three or four exhibitions planned in the UK. So one in the uh, New York Gallery Walsall in, uh, Bir near Birmingham. One in uh, another centre, in, one in a street level, Glasgow, Scotland one uh, in uh, Wales, three, four exhibitions already planned. So the, the animals uh, uh, exhibition like toured from, uh, from Birmingham, from the New York Gallery also to four or five different locations of the, uh, all across the UK. And so I said to uh, my wife, Lara, um, if uh, she wanted to like to, to come, to go yeah. to London with me, basically. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, um, has been like. Uh, and you've never left. <laughs> no, yeah, exactly. Yeah, twelve, nearly. Yeah. I yeah. didn't realize it was. I didn't realize. I thought you'd come to London a bit earlier. I didn't realize the book had already been published. I was going to talk, obviously, about the first book, The Animals, um, which I know was mostly photographed in the sort of countryside around Perugia, where you where you come from. Um, and I was going to ask about why that subject. Were, were you always interested in in animals was it was it something for yes you? yes um i um, sort of grew up in a uh Umbra is sort of very green so you know the animals account encounters are not so that uh exotic if you want <laughs> so uh you could uh, i used to be uh, of course you need to i would uh, drive a car where to explore my region uh Umbria, as i said so um and uh, you know it came um, it came out well i just realized that you know uh, there were lots of animals uh and uh, i grew up with 
I, I love animals, so my yeah. love with you know animals uh, has been um, um, yeah, it was great. Um, I love it. Um, I love being surrounded. Well, I had uh, lots of animals. I used to collect pigeons, so I had uh, ah. lots of big pigeons. Like, it, but I think they yeah, like pi big pigeons. Like they weigh probably half a kilo. Or so you know, not like the regular. That's a big pigeon. <laughs> yeah, big pigeons. Yeah. Um, and, I was going to say maybe you could show some of, of the course. Oh yes, on oh, that yeah. series for, for people course. who are maybe not so um, familiar with the work. Of course, Giacomo's yeah. kind of first major series, The Animals. Um, exactly. Yeah, this is the first time that I came across your work. Um, because, because Richard, you were, uh, if not the first, probably the second, uh, or probably the first. I, I'm not sure. Person to show my work in the UK. So actually, before moving, because you had the show back in 2006, I think. I, yeah, I, th I think so. I think yeah. just just that just was the first person. So I'm, I'm yeah. pleased and proud with that. Yeah. I had a the first solo show was in another gallery in the UK, but you you gave me uh, for sure the first the solo uh, group show. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, this is the series. Uh, um, I was going to say that there is something about the very sort of well, maybe I should start by saying that. You sent me a submission, which I always, always remember. Uh, you, you mean a digital submission, yeah. No, no, you sent me a physical submission. Oh, physical submission, okay. You sent me a small box of like, wow. maybe three or four of your eight by 10 prints. Oh, wow. Beautifully colored tissue paper with a handwritten note introducing yourself and explaining <laughs> the project and introducing your work. And I have to say, I now use it. I do quite a few talks at you know universities to students who are graduating, and I talk about it as you know one of the the best submissions that I've ever received, and how to make such a kind of great impression on a gallery when you are you know so, so many email and kind of virtual submissions, oh. something so beautiful and so delicate, and also which very much matched into the style of the prints, which again is something that I wanted to talk about because the prints are incredibly sort of tactile they are they are a, 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 you know on a paper which is kind of much thicker than normal photographic paper they have these lovely round edges which you kind of can't necessarily fully sort of appreciate from the imagery and I was going to ask I mean both from the point of view of the, the physical prints whether it was always your intention to make them that sort of unique and distinct and similarly with the approach to the gallery whether again the, the the idea of doing something very kind of consciously away from you know anything digital sending this beautiful kind of handcrafted box of very uh handmade feeling kind of prints was always sort of part of the attention to kind of try and do something that was very different from i guess the the where the medium generally was going at that time sorry that's a very long question no, 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 of course, but uh, back in 2000, when I, you know, really, you know, started uh, shooting and printing, uh, 2000, 2001, uh, I mean, digital was not that, not, not, no. not, not common, if you want. So I had, uh, you know, if you, especially if you were doing black and white, so I don't know why I said, uh, okay, let's start black and white, because I started with a, I had a Triax and a T-Max, uh, um, film-wise. And uh, so I picked uh, a Triax 400 uh, one day and uh, never changed it since then. So you know, it's, uh, um, my approach has been uh, always very strict in terms of, so I wanted to be able to, uh, to have a uh, uh, to have a tool and be able to use it and change uh, if you want my view uh, alongside with the with the with equipment. So uh, the um, so I said um, darkroom printing was very common at that time, and uh, yeah, probably five six years later, you. Uh, Probably, if you had to work with magazines, they would require you to shoot digital. I don't know, no idea. I never, never had the, I don't have experience of that. But 
the um, it was quite common, still quite common, the the printing and the uh, analog uh, analogic word, if you want. Yeah. Uh, the uh, the present the, the portfolio that I intended. I mean, it's a I didn't have any. Um, I, I just uh, I was printing in the bathroom, and <laughs> uh, like I like I do now. Uh, and uh, so that prints, uh, they just came out uh, very, you know, that I liked the, the look of them. Uh, the, as you said, I mean, the, how they, they came out from, uh, from Darkroom. So I just uh, didn't change anything. Well, I did change some, but uh, I, did, I, I don't cut the corners anymore for certain series. Right. And I like to present them in um, a different way because... Uh, because uh, you know it's a, it's good to to see uh, you know little changes over time. So sure. uh, I do I do make some changes along the way, but uh, not much. I mean my pro my my the integrity of my uh, approach has been um, it's never been uh, mined. It's never been. Um, I mean I always do uh, the same printing. I always do the same uh, uh, long-term projects, so I work for long-term, like years in projects, and uh, dark, same paper, same film, same camera, same. Uh, is the paper not not quite unusual though? Is it because again, to me, it it always it always seemed much kind of you know weightier. It felt like a little object rather than quite often, you know, photographic paper. Can feel quite light. Uh, uh, probably is my probably is more my vision that fits that support, if you want support right. in terms, you know, paper um, and that presentation. Because um, uh, I've seen um, I've seen um, uh, pictures of you know say uh, around that uh, they have a similar uh, similar approach, but a similar say way of presentation, but. You know, I don't, uh, you know, mine are better. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, you know, um, um, the, I've, I've, I mean, I've seen uh, like a, um, I think probably it's a combination of things. I mean, it's a, like a, uh, it's a whole, uh, it's the whole uh, thing that works. Yeah, and, well, uh, it does, it does. And as I said, you know, I didn't have any, you know, photographic background at all, so. I wasn't, uh, hadn't been influenced by anything back then. Mm. So, uh, I've actually got a question sort of on, on this subject from Greg in Italy. Thank you for your question. Who is asking um, whether you achieve your signature dark style in the printing process or during shooting? Well, it's a dual sort of combination. I think it's the uh, the the uh, the printing process. Of course, you know, in my case, has helped me a lot. Is helping me a lot uh, because the um, the I learn a lot. I've been learning I've, I, every time I get in. I go into dark room. Is uh, is like a I learn something new, right. even you know silly things that. Uh, you know, from time to time, you speak to a photographer, and he said, "Because uh, you know, these are large, has got these, and you said, and I said, really, and I didn't, because I, you know, it's, uh, the the dark room, the the printing is um, is is magic. So yeah, uh, every every day you learn something new, and as I do, so the printing process in that respect um, has helped me in uh, finding my uh, probably also knowing the light better." Because it's always, uh, in my case, the light that um, I, uh, using a, only one combination of di diaphragm and speed of shutter, basically. So I always look for, um, for that special light that I know, uh, like 100%. Yeah. But that I know better than other lights, if you want. Uh, so I, I like when my subjects are in that light. So that's why, that's when, sorry, that's when I like to shoot. Uh, so probably, and uh, these, uh, um, um, 
uh, this uh, I don't know how I get into but it, this is the light that I know yeah. and the light that I know of course you know the that I know that my work can um, can work my uh, my uh, pictures can work so it's the only one that I know and uh, through printing I have de developed over the years because uh, the, the printings are uh, Printing is a is a is a physical action. So is a, I mean, it gets into your vein if you want. So you know, it must be uh, different from a you know digital printing somehow. Yeah. Uh, so Sorry. I. Sorry, go ahead. No, no. So um, um, yeah. That's it. That's the. Uh, I hope I've uh, I've answered uh, Der Derek. Greg. Derek. Greg. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there is something about the sort of small scale, intimate, almost kind of magical quality of the images that, to me, makes them feel like little treasures, which is very much kind of you know captured in the way that they are printed and kind of presented. And I just want to ask if that's how it would feel like you were out in search of treasure when you would set out to capture them on one of your, because I know you go out early in the morning to kind of capture your subjects. Of course, yes. So was it like a little kind of treasure hunt that you would be out on to try and find Yeah, them? absolutely, yes. I'm, yeah. um, it's, uh, uh, it's that magic that I mentioned earlier that I like. I mean, is uh, these uh, going around for years, not finding anything, and then one day you sort of uh, you're so happy about a certain image that you know you stick to it for 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 your whole life. So yeah. that's the that's this you know never ending process that is very fascinating to me. So the um, the small, yeah, um, small. I uh, at the beginning I was uh, printing smaller because I had a smaller bathroom, so <laughs> uh, so I had to. But yeah, but but since the Eternal London project, I did. Uh, I started to make bigger prints. Uh, it's very different in terms of uh, you viewer uh, the perception of, you know, uh, of the work. But uh, it's so good when you see uh, my work as a printer in that case, or as an artist. I mean, it's uh, my interpretation of the prints yeah. in um, in the larger prints. So um, that's one thing that I've. Uh, so I like them. I like the small ones because I do two sizes. So I, I like the small ones and I like the big ones. So. It's uh, it's great. It's great to be able, even that versatility is super versatile photography. So you can have two sizes, which is yeah. great because you have, uh, you know, a still, you know, super limited edition prints because I do 10 and five. So very, you know, 15, uh, 15, 18 prints in total. So, you know, very, very depending on the project, but, you know, super limited uh, pieces if you want, but still, uh still uh, the match the 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 film is uh you know the uh this being uh the mean being um uh, uh the the mean uh, uh the photography mean being uh, so uh popular and versatile yeah. and you know you can you can have uh Pictures uh, printed on uh, t-shirts, on t-shirts, on posters, on uh, billboards, on uh, you know whatever. So yeah. it's um, it's very fascinating that. Uh, I've just got an interesting question in from Robbie in London, which is going to kind of lead me on to my next question too. He asks, "What is your workflow like? Do you shoot every day, and how do you know you have a, a winner?" And I was going to ask about the picture which won the Sony World Photography Award from this series, which maybe you could show us the one of the. Of course. Of course. Dog. Of course. 
Yeah. So how, how do you, it was this sort of process to answer Robbie's question? Is it, do you go out, did you go out sort of daily shooting and? I used to, I used to, I used yeah. to uh, every day. Uh, I used to every day. Um, now I'm more um, focused on projects. So I've uh, say that I've, uh, um, um, I, with the animals, it was very and, and people because I did uh, another one. Well, I will show you later. My first, my really first project, very first project on uh, uh, like project like series in uh, with you know something in mind. Uh, so before the animals, who we talk in 2000, 2004. But I always had a um, uh, so the uh, the thing is. Uh, um uh, lost the third but yeah uh is uh the uh, uh i used to shoot a lot every day i used to shoot animals every day so i would uh wake up say four five six and shooting until say one two in the afternoon so uh, i still have uh, um i mean it was uh probably uh so uh what most beautiful memories in my life being yeah. able to being able to drive around Italy central Italy looking for you know parking the car walking or you know the woods the but you know even doing don't know 200 miles well not 200 but say you know 50 miles per day so um, in um, like shooting for you know uh, looking for animals basically so i was drawn uh, by you know, animals was my animals were like my thing yeah um the now is uh, i work more on uh, projects so uh, i do like a project for a couple of years where i say the last project that i uh, did on uh, did on uh, new york and uh, uh, where I I did uh, like uh, uh, four trips over five months in in the city, uh, where spending like uh, between three four weeks five weeks each trip, so different, uh, d completely different approach. But is uh, but it's good because it's uh, I don't want to. Uh, I've always uh, I had this idea of uh, that I I've been probably uh, changing over the last uh, couple of years, but I don't want to produce um, uh, much. These uh, of course yeah, I want to produce. Uh, uh, in the, I mean productivity is uh, always help, always help. Sorry, but uh, the I and you know but my 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 projects and my photographs are not many around so you know probably being for the projects themselves or the pre of the you know the editions but uh, of the i mean limited being limited but um i always have uh, this idea of being um, you know not producing uh, much so i like to to do like a project here probably one every two three is good. And, and so, do you edit? Do you, do you kind of edit? You know, very. Do you take a lot and edit a lot, or do you know? You know, again, going back to that question, do you know when you've got a winner? You know, you see this shot. You must have printed this, and you must have thought, this is a really, really strong. In that case, yeah. yes. In the case when I saw it in the negative, um, I, re uh, I still remember it. Uh, it was like a, I knew I had some. I might have something, but with film photography, you never know. And I, I don't. I'm not. Uh, I don't develop films. So, so I, I sent it at a like 24 hour shop uh, in uh, Umbria yeah. to get it developed. And uh, I got it back, and I, I was looking at it in the light, like in the camera, like and I said, I was expecting something. Because I I took like nine shots, six shots, so but you know this dog was really crazy. So you know I was expecting something, 
So, uh, so I was looking at it and said, oh, wow. So I, can't, I couldn't wait to, to be in the darkroom and print it. And when yeah. I saw it, it was like a, because it's strange with great images, it's, um, I think great images are very strange because they, they, you sort of, uh, you relate them to something else. So like a first impression, they don't impress you much. So, you know, to me, uh, when I saw it in the negative and in the printing later, you know, for me, it was like a, um, something that I had seen before. Right. Uh, that I had, but in reality. I mean, photography is not reality. So, um, so in, that, in that sense, yes. It was a it was a winner, uh, yeah. but um, I think it's this constant flow of you know looking for something that drives you to to find the perfect image. Yeah, well the, the you know the the your best image. Uh, so the um, of course I um, being a I wanted my winner images image to be in a in a like portfolio of prints within the same subjects within the same project and within within the same approach. Yeah. So you know, um, is and this is part this is the project that got published in your your first book by Darry Lewis back in two thousand eight. Right. That must have been quite a quite a moment to basically get yes of course yes project it, published yeah yeah because it was a very important part of you know because i um i i i, I started to grow as a photographer as, as an art, a photographer artist attending portfolio reviews around the uh, uk at that time so i didn't mention that i forgot but uh we, we probably we moved to london because of these portfolio reviews around the world that you can attend you pay like a small world depending on on the festival but in a small fee to show your project to a big audience big audience being experts in uh, in the fields of photography so editor publishers uh, galleries collectors uh, agencies so uh, and at that time um, uh, there was rhubarb rhubarb in birmingham Oh yeah, Ruben in Birmingham. Uh, it was a it will, for the UK has been uh, the the biggest festival ever. Uh, portfolio review. Well, I wouldn't say festival. It was like a portfolio, very you know, portfolio review focused uh, festival. You had uh, some exhibitions on the side, but it was portfolio review. So you had the three days where you could uh, show your work to uh, big. Uh, players in photography industry and uh, the rhubarb has been for me um, great i mean is um, i had the chance to meet uh, crazy and uh, super uh, super important people they have re important super important and for my career so yeah. they really helped me help me in uh, in getting out and uh, that will Lewis was one of them so we had, uh, so I had, um, I showed Dawi my project uh, um, uh, like three, four times over the years, but 2004, 2005, 2006, and 2007 probably. And uh, in 2008, we got the chance to publish the book. So um, it was great. Um, and did that then lead quite, quite, sort of soon after that was published and you know received good attention and good notices is that how you then came to the attention of the photographers gallery who represent yeah, yeah um the photographers gallery they i still remember Gemma who um Gemma Bart uh, stay works there uh and uh, so she said to me uh she dropped me an email saying that um she wanted to see my portfolio so and um, so we came to London like uh, we were in London like uh, four months uh, earlier. So um, it was great to be you know to get into that sort of representation uh, status, uh, for, you know, since the beginning basically. So we've you know I've been um, I've been uh, with uh, the photographers gallery for you know eleven years now. 
So, but yes, uh, that will use being a, a well respected uh, uh, publisher, especially in the UK, and uh, you know, is a um, he published it, but back then he, he was a very small, no, no, not very small, but it was a smaller publisher. Uh, so uh, now is uh, now is uh, um, he publishes more books per year. Uh, but yeah, um, so it was a, even a bigger, if you want, uh, achievement for me being. Yeah you know six uh six seven eight books per year that you would publish so um, um but yeah uh, we had um sort of a if you want do you want me to go into details of you know how i got into the publishing with dawi lewis or no i think i mean it's really just to give a kind of overview i guess for for anybody listening who you know is is a practicing photographer who is interested to know the of course. yeah of course I think I mean, yeah, every, sure. everybody progresses in a different way and has a different yeah. approach and sometimes it can be you know that you just meet the the right person like you said at a portfolio review and and things kind of happen from there and i yeah, yeah. sure but uh, it's um, um getting your work in front of people is probably the most important uh, thing, being, right? I, I think being the publishing word a uh, very uh, um it's is a little bit crazy now because you know you meet with uh, people who they love what they're doing like i do and uh, of course you know they they want to, to take uh, you know they want the i'm not saying you know spread the risk with but you know it's a uh, because they they really love what they do so you know yeah. it's, uh, it's a very fascinating world and with Dawi, which is a lovely person i'm uh, and caroline uh, but uh, we sort of uh, we sort of uh, had an agreement, got an agreement where I would uh, buy um, some copies in advance to sort of uh, fund the project. And uh, I was very lucky because the New York Gallery Wardsall in Birmingham, a big museum in Birmingham, uh, put some money together with the Arts yeah. Council as well. So we had like four forces together. Yeah, I think there is. I think there is a misapprehension for a lot of people that, you know, if you get a if you get a book deal that you know your book everything is kind of paid for and it's all done. It that happens very very rarely with only some of the major major publishing houses. Normally there are contributions. There are different ways of doing yeah, it, and, yeah, and yeah. it's a collaborative kind of process because of the realities of the kind of economies it's just impossible to, yeah. to, to do it yourself or by one small publisher it's not, i'm just a bit aware of time that i we don't we don't have a massive amount of time and i wanted to kind of start uh talking a little bit more about some of the the later work um and so i was going to ask about with eternal london and with the latest project new york your yeah. focus has moved from animals more onto the human form and many of the figures in the shots wear hats, shoes and overcoats that make them look like they have walked out of a 1940s film noir. And I just want to know whether that sort of cinematic style was a, was a kind of, or has become, or was a big kind of influence on your, on your style? No, it wasn't. No, okay. That's no. the answer to that question. <laughs> no, because it's, um, no. Uh, I started to look at noir movies, uh, after that, you know, everybody was saying, oh, your pictures looks like noir movies. But yeah, I'm a big fan of, you know, I love movies, but I've never been a big fan of, you know, noir movie. I mean, no. it's, uh, uh, my, um, uh, yeah, so I've never been a big fan. I wasn't, say, uh, inspired by movie, noir, noir film. Yeah. No, I guess there's just something, there's something more dramatic, I guess, about the, you know, people wearing hats or, or you know, high heeled shoes. Well, that's fashion. That's more fashion. Yeah. It's a, um, so I'm, um, when I see someone uh, moving around a city, I will, you know, I need a, you know, something to start with. And sometimes it's a, like a, is an accessory. So like a, like a, 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 like a, a hat, a, don't know, a top hat, a, yeah. In coats or something that you know it's a uh, 
can somehow um, make me uh, make me play with photography, make me play with, uh, you know, like a, if I was like a movie maker. If you, if yeah. So I start to, I start to like, uh, you know, I become a, like a writer, a poet. So right. I use that, that particular things to, to fantasize. Will you show us some of the Eternal London series? Of course, yeah. We've got a question actually about um, how, with some of the ones where, where you are quite close up behind people, how do you manage to capture some of the subjects without them knowing when you get so close to them? I'm presuming most people, or do people know that you are sometimes taking pictures? Of course. Some of them really know, yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, because uh, I had uh, even, you know, bad um, incident where I had people turning around and saying to me, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> uh, or, you know, I'm going to call the police now. But uh, I think it's part of the, it's part of the, it's part of, you know, everyone's job. I think you have sometimes a that fear of not being uh, politically politically correct, if you want. Yeah. So uh, I don't think it's very different from. Uh, but yeah, uh, for instance, in that case, I just yeah, bent on Westminster Bridge. I was uh, I, I was following a horse. Uh, walk um, trotting towards me or galloping towards me and I just bent and took a picture I got to use a view, um, viewfinder so I can look through it uh, and um, so I was lucky because sometimes I really um, I think you get um, uh, you need to you need to to be brave and uh, uh, experiment different things to get to the point to uh, mm, to get to the point to get the right shot yeah and uh, you're, you're quite literally putting your your life slightly on the line there with a horse exactly or head with a policeman probably sitting on top of that horse of course oh yes oh yes I was oh. uh, yeah I also wanted to ask you, there's a lovely quote, the, the Eternal London book um, from Thomas More, yeah. which says, go where we may, rest where we will, Eternal London haunts us still. Does that sum up how you feel about your adopted home city? Yes. Well, it still, you know, fascinates me, which is yeah. even better. But it's part, you know, fascination is, uh, it's... You know, it's part of that, you know, haunting, if you want, uh, uh, process. Whereas, um, but yes, absolutely. I mean, it's uh, still, uh, well, you know, it's, uh, it's one of the city, the cities that I love the most. So that's why I'm here. Yeah. It's, you know, it's a, it's a very... Uh, I've been uh, coming since I was like uh, very young, so um, so it's, you know it, there's a lot, there's a strong connection uh, with London for me now, uh, and uh, yeah, I find it you know super fascinating, super super traditional, super non-traditional, super modern, super uh, crazy super yeah. political super number yeah i love it yeah and i was gonna say despite the sort of dark surface um both with this series and maybe even more so i think with with the new series the for uh, the new york images um there, there's a sort of a, a kind of tenderness and a, a a kind of warmth within the pictures and I just want to ask whether there is a kind of, you know, there is a, a, a romance, whether you feel a, a kind of a romantic connection almost to these kind of great cities like London and New York. And are you an old romantic at heart is basically what I'm asking. 
Probably yes. <laughs> Probably yes. Um, yeah, I think so. Um, um, Probably you know it's a, I, I, now you know nostalgic is is it's not that popular now because it's uh, it's been but uh, everybody's nostalgic I think so I don't want to be in that sort of uh, uh, bracket but yeah um, uh, romantic um, yeah I'm um, I like. Um, I like like raw emotions, if you want. Yeah. So yeah, in that respect, yeah, I'm, I'm romantic. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And listen, as we are talking about New York, um, and I know that we haven't actually got a huge amount of time left at all. Um, your latest book on New York has just been published, yeah. and I'm just thinking you must be thrilled with it because there is a very very distinctive look and feel to it. Um, it's almost like each page has an individual print fixed onto the paper. Um, I urge people to try and seek out copies of Giacomo's book, which you can order. Um, send me, if you can uh, send him uh, an email to my name and surname at gmail.com. Yeah, you can get a copy of the book, but there's just, there's a sort of tactile quality to the images on the paper, which is very, very unusual. And I just wanted to know whether that was uh, something that you s strove to try and achieve and... and Not at all. Not, Not at, at all. all. How interesting. Because it was my publisher's uh, suggestion. Uh, uh, I worked this time with a different publishers. So a different publisher, sorry. So I worked with three different publishers in my career. So one is that we, that we use, we, which published uh, who are published uh, like uh, four books with him. Uh, then I work with Pierre Bessard. Uh, I did one, a self portrait one. Then um, uh, Skinner books from Italy uh, came about, and uh, so it was uh, his own idea. So he got in, he called, he actually called me. Uh, I was in Venice shooting my latest series and he said to me, uh, Giacomo, we met in Paris, Paris Photo last year, uh, November, uh, where I had the chance to show my latest pro project, my new project. And he, uh, so uh, he said to me, uh, I want to launch a Paris Photo in New York. So I said, oh, wow. Uh, and uh, so I left uh, him to do the design. And uh, he came up with these ideas, a couple of ideas, and uh, so he was uh, his own merit. No problem at all. I mean, he's um, uh, has been a fantastic uh, person to work with as well. With you know, I I had amazing books from Pierre Bessard, Dawi Lewis, Milo, 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 Milo is his name, and so uh, his own idea. So he came up with these, uh, and uh, I went to Verona EBS to print it, and we had uh, these amazing sheets coming out from the hot from the press, and uh, we would look at these images uh, with black pages, this Garda paper, 160, 70 grams, and uh, it was amazing. It was amazing, but it was a uh, Skinner books design. So I d it's, it's so effective because it really feels like it's a it's like a sort of old fashioned sort of photo album with it feels like real real prints yeah on the page it, it and went, you, you touch them and you, went, you're yeah. surprised that they don't move it's it's a very we don't, you know they don't get you know they're, they're, they're still like you know they're still um, you expect them to be still wet yeah from yeah album, exactly album, yeah incredible yeah I I urge people to um, Get in touch with Giacomo and um, get themselves a, a copy of the book. Giacomo even has said that he will um, sign people's books for them if they kind of email through to GiacomoBrunelli at gmail.com and place their orders. It's a, it's a really beautiful book. I'm, I'm really, really sorry because we have, we have got through our time incredibly quickly and we've barely 
scratch the surface of your work. I'm sorry, Jack, that's my bad timekeeping. So just a quick question, your, your new project, you mentioned Venice, is that when Venice, yeah. opens so up, we'll be back to Venice? Yeah, it's, a, it's going to, uh, and hopefully I will be finishing it within 2020, uh, Saturday in January, uh, and uh, uh, fingers crossed, uh, uh, I will um, I will finish it, uh, but yeah, uh, I did two trips of uh, two weeks each, one in January and one in February, and uh, it was great. It was great to get to know Venice. Yeah, in, um, get to know Venice uh, through photography, through you know, um, incredible. Um, so I want to do a project on the city just to, because uh, I want to, yeah, I want to be, uh, express myself there. Because I think- It's a magical know, the city. The architecture there is incredible. And, you know, the history is, uh, is Italy, but is Istanbul. It's Italy, but it's, I uh, don't know, India. It's uh, Italy, but it's England as well. So yeah. it's, uh, it's crazy there. Being so First. small. So, yeah. you know, like, you know, 50,000 people. So incredible. Um, I've got a last question in quickly, um, and then we are going to have to wrap up. Robbie has asked, where can we see your people project? I have never seen these images before, and I'm really sorry that we didn't get round to them. So, of course. Give yeah. Robbie a quick... A quick answer because um of course oh yeah we like to wrap up before eight o'clock so everybody can go outside and show their appreciation for the nhs and key work cool. and be able to go out and applaud uh, uh, that's that's the project is that on your website jack or is that no it's not it's not it's not it's not, not. it's like a never edited never published never you know shown anywhere so I tell you what, when your when your project on Venice is finished, we will get you back to do a second talk if that's all right, and then maybe we can look back at some of your earlier series that we haven't had time to look at. Of course, of course. Oh yes. So listen, it just remains for me to say thank you, everybody, for thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you very, very much for being the guest tonight. And again, I'm really sorry that we've had to through things a little bye guys thank you so much bye bye um and we're back in a fortnight so that's 7 p.m thursday the 18th of may thank you everybody for listening keep well stay safe and go and give everybody a good clap outside thanks a lot take care everybody thank you giacomo bye bye thank you bye bye, -bye.